Attention readers and leaders, we got a special offer for you right now. Save and Miss Caroline, the world-renowned author, Anthony L. Kelly, just dropped his new book. And guess what? We got it for you guys right now. Go to the top line of the description box right now and go claim your copy right now. What are you guys waiting for? Right this way. Hip hop uncensored is the vibe, so subscribe. Hip hop uncensored is the vibe, so subscribe. Oh God, driving Sam and Ryan passenger side, and you heard it out the mouth of the greatest rapper alive. Go gang. demons and everything it, it was difficult for him to maneuver and to you know and it's just time was against him he didn't have enough time yeah, I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure I, I yeah. believe if he had the time before he passed away he wanted to really change his life he really wanted to uh do better as a husband and as a father you know he he wanted to get the surgery you know what i'm saying to lose the weight this is all like within the week before he passed away you know what i'm saying and um and it was a little too late. You know what I'm saying? It was. Yeah. It was yeah. Time, and, we don't have the time. Right. And there was also, you know, oftentimes record companies will get life insurance policies on artists. So mm -hmm. Loud and Sony did. had a had life it. insurance yeah. policy on Pun. Mm -hmm. And we still yeah. have yet to find out in the course of the audit that we're still conducting to find out who actually got that money. Because that money was yeah. not used to reduce the unrecoup so balance. Recoup. Exactly. Liza yeah. didn't get any of that money. So we're we still are trying to figure out who actually got the money. Do you know how much it was? It's interesting. It was about a million dollars. I don't know. Uh I remember him, they they ordered a limo for him. He got it a limo. Me and him we went to some uh a private office doctor in like on the second avenue downtown. And he walked in, they conducted uh I didn't like a life insurance because he was like so overweight, but they got the life insurance passed, and I remember there was a, an uh, Rich Isis's assistant at the time. She confirmed that it was for a million dollars, and mm -hmm. you know, and my understanding is in the contract, in their contract, that any record label could put out life insurance on an artist, which is understandable because if you put money up on an artist and they pass away, a life insurance will be used to recoup the costs that the label put behind you. You know what I'm saying mm -hmm. for recording, which makes sense. But you know, um, he passed away when he passed away in the hospital. Um, and Rich Eisen called me up, um, Steve Griffin called me up and said, hey, can we announce it? Uh, I said, yes. After that, I told them the instructions of how Pum was to bury. And I left it to the label and Joe to handle everything. Uh, life insurance, obviously, you know, they, 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 they must have got whatever, but it was never used to recoup any of the balances or the recordings, you know, that, that he did with Sony. So who cashed it or who had it? I have no idea. Right. But that it was wasn't given to me. It wasn't given to the kids. You know, it wasn't put up somewhere right. so when the kids are a certain age, they get. It, it was nothing. Yeah, you know, was there was nothing either. That, there was nothing yeah. either because, you know, they, they, mm -hmm. there's a narrative about me that I'm just this horrible person, right? And uh, But at the end of the day, you still didn't, nobody put nothing aside for the kids. Like, what do what the kids have to do with this? These are innocent, innocent. kids. Now they're grown, but there was nothing set aside for the kids, like in the state or a trust fund for them so that when they get to a certain age, they get these funds. There was nothing set for the kids, you know what I'm saying? So, um, you know. <laughs> right, yeah, I, was, I kind of jumped ahead a little bit. I was gonna ask you, you know, I remember him saying in one of his songs that he lost a hundred pounds, he's trying to live. I was gonna ask you about the last few days, you know, upon being here. It looked like he was making a conscious effort to stop eating as much, change his life around, lose weight. So how were the last few days, you know, um, being with Big Pun? Uh, it was, um, well, he he, he did want to lose the weight. They sent him to a fat farm. That's when he was recording the um, Yeah Baby. And they sent him to some facility that we was in Durham, North Carolina. And it was a wrong situation. First, they told me that he was going to be hospitalized and, and, you know, with doctors and around the care and all that. But. It ended up us in a hotel and him, you know, uh, going to this facility that they expected him to weigh himself every day and, and sit in a group, you know, and talk about his feelings with a whole bunch of, you know, um, you know, people, you know, so he wasn't going to do that. So once he saw how, how he could manipulate the situation, he stood there for like, I guess we stood there like for like a month, two months, we lost a hundred pounds, which is when you're like 500 pounds, you know, 600 pounds, that's like water weight. You know what I'm saying? So he lost that weight. And then from there, they're like, high five, yeah, you're good, you're good. And then they sent them off to do the keto 
uh, Tito Trinidad, the fight. Remember when he performed in the yeah. ring and Tito Trinidad? He literally mm-hmm. just came out the, the facility. And he wasn't, it wasn't the right situation. And he was supposed to lose another two, 300 pounds. You know what I'm saying? So he could actually be healthy and be good. Um, they should have told his old trainer that he was that pun respected and get real a nutritionist and, 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 you know, and really, really put in the time to help him lose weight. So that was just like a band-aid patch. Nobody really cared about his health. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, you know, so it just, you know, so then after he came out the, after he came back home, after we came back home from the facility in North Carolina, he was just, and it's not like pun eight, like, you know how you see overweight people that they eat like three loaves of bread and three dozen of eggs and a pound of bacon. <laughs> he didn't eat like that. I say because I I I I up and by, I would watch those shows, my six hundred pound life, and I would see these overweight people and they would eat so much, and I would get angry because I'm like, why is he not still living? You know what I'm saying? Why Pun had to pass away? Like he didn't even eat like that. You know what I'm saying? But then again, he never went to the doctor to check himself, so I have no idea what other issues he could have health wise with thyroids, if it was whatever to why he was gaining the weight. You know, it's all about his energy and you know what he was projecting his pain to show his body, but. Um, yeah, so when he came out, when he came home, you know what I'm saying, he gained a lot of weight. From 500 pounds that he went in and lost weight, he gained that he died when he was 200 pounds more. It was 700 pounds that he gained. So he was in the studio, we would order him fruit and so that and he would throw up everything and his body was shutting down, his face, his color. And we was at the hotel at the time because um, he was recording um, Endangered Species. You know what I'm saying? So we would stay sometimes a week, two weeks in, Endangered Spe- in Sony Studio downtown to record or not, we would have a hotel in Crown Plaza in White Plains and he would go up there and, um, and yeah, and it was like the last week, you know what I'm saying? Uh, we got into this argument, you know what I'm saying? And and I was standing up for myself and and uh, and he said that, you know, um, that he really loved me and he wanted to have another kid. And I said that there was no way I could have another kid with the situation of him being in the health and being in the, 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 the trauma that me and him as a married couple have, the back and forth fighting or whatever, I said, that's not going to be possible. And, you know, and, and and he made a promise. He wanted to change his life. And, you know, we had a good talk and he wanted to change his life there. And, you know, he wanted to get the surgery. And I remember him calling his sister. He was calling a lot of people that weekend. He was calling a lot of family members and people trying to connect, you know. And I remember him calling his sister, Penelope. She came down to the hotel with her kids. And uh, he called my mom. He called my brother. They spent some time there. And that weekend was like, uh, that weekend was different than any other time. It was like, it was, it reminded me back like when we was 14, 15 years old when we first started dating. So he was like, you know, it, it was a difference in him. And, um, and I found out when he passed away that he spoke to his sister, Penelope, and asked her if he would, if she would help him, you know, if he got the surgery in the process of like healing, you know what I'm saying? And, um, and she said, yeah, of course, you and Liza can come up to Miami and we will help you and snap and me and Liza will help you recover and stuff like that. And, and you know, and, and that was a conversation that he sent me away from the, from the hotel room to have this conversation with his sister. So um, she went home that Monday, you know, looking for places for her to get surgery. And at the same time, you know, because I told him it was before, like, I don't know what I got to do. But I got to put a gun to your head, tie you up, drag you out. Like, what do I got to do? Like, you need help. You're going to die. You're, you need help. And he was always talking about he was going to die. He was going to die. And he told me, he please, he said, I'm going to get the help. Just please let me finish um, endangered species. All I have, I mean, let me just, not endangered species, let me just finish Yeah, Baby. That's what he was calling Yeah, Baby. So I just got like four or five songs that I have to record. And he was still trying to, you know, figure it out, like the layout of the album and everything. So I said, okay, while well, you figure that out, I'm going to figure out where can... Uh, where can we go to get you help? I was just, I'm calling around places. I even called the White Plains Hospital, the same hospital he died. They're like, hey, you know, my husband's 600 pounds. Like, how could I help him? You know what I'm saying? So, you know, his sister was in Miami having a mission of finding the surgery, and I was on my mission, and that Monday morning, he passed away. And after he passed away, she told me about the conversation he had, which stems from the conversation that me and him had about having another child and, 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 and having us to him having to fix his his anger issues with you know and and you know and our abusive relationship which he extremely apologized many times and cried for but you know he dealt you know he him being having a traumatic childhood and dealing with a lot of demons you know what I'm saying you know and 